Hi, welcome to math class with Mrs. King. Today I'm going over fifth grade, module two, lesson one. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we have 23 times 20, then we have think 23 ones times two tens equal blank tens. So if we can get the students to look at this as a unit, we can get rid of the zeros and more so just focus on um, the digits that are greater than zero. And it makes it easier to do the calculation. So we have 23 times two. So anything, or you can think of 22 times two as two copies of 23. Okay, and we will add them up. So remember, when we're multiplying by two, we're just doubling it. So that'll give us 46 tens. So they already tell you what the tens are, and then you just gotta think about, okay, well, how does 46 tens look? 46 tens is 460, okay? So maybe it'll help students to remember that when it's tens, you're gonna just add one zero to it. Okay, let's do another example. Three digit number times a two digit number. So it's a little bit larger than the one we did before. So they have already indicated uh, what the unit, the unit form for each is. So we have 23 tens times two tens. Okay, so again, in our previous problem, we found out that 23 times two is 46. And then we need to figure out if I'm multiplying 10 times tens, so I have a 10, tens here, times tens here, when you have a 10 times a 10, what do you get? So you'll do one times one is one, and then you'll just count the number of zeros in your factors and add that to your answer. So you'll do one, two, so then you'll write one, two to your answer. So we just found out that tens times tens give you hundreds. So you're, you're gonna write 46 hundreds. Okay, and then here you're just gonna show the standard form. So how do we show 4,600? We so, show 4,600 with two zeros. So remember when we did tens, we showed it with one zero behind our number, but here we're doing hundreds, we're showing it with two zeros. Okay. So in the homework, students have an example similar to this. So you have 410 times 400. So 410 is 41 tens times 400 in the standard form is written as 400 equals 164 blank. Okay, so they have already did, we have factors, like these factors are kinda, they're, um, these are not small factors. So they already provided us with the answer. So we just gotta figure out what are we gonna put here for our units. So if you have tens times 100, you will multiply one times one and get one. And then you'll go back and just count your factors. One, two, three, and that's what you will add to your product. One, two, three. So it's a thousand. So how do we show a thousand in word form? We simply write thousand. So when we have tens times hundreds, we get thousands, okay? Now, how does that look in standard form? So again, notice when we said 41 tens, we showed that with one zero. Notice when we said 4 hundreds, we showed that with two zeros. Now, when we say 164 thousands, we're gonna show that with three zeros. Okay. So when students reach the number two in their homework, it's gonna ask them 
to tell if these equations are true or false. So like, let's just take a look at this example here. It's similar to the homework. This is not from the homework. This is actually from students' classwork. But this is to provide some examples that you can use to help you with the homework. Okay, so let's just see if this is so. So six tens, so we know when it's tens, you add a zero. So we're gonna put this in standard form to see if it's true. Then we're doing two tens, which is 20, times three tens, which is 30. So remember, whenever you see tens, just add one zero. All right? So if we were to do, I'm gonna erase this one here. So if we were to do two times three, we will get six. Then if we count our factors, we will see that we have one, two. If we count the zeros in our factors, we'll see that we have one, two zeros. So we will add that to the answer, making that 600. This we had 60, as you can see, they're not equal. So this statement is false. So you definitely want the students to work out the problems to see if it's true. So I can do another one. So let's say they have something similar to this one. So with this one, I, will, I can use the associative property, which means I can just Whichever two I want to multiply first, I'll place them in parentheses. And that's using the associative property. And then I will go ahead and multiply to see if this is true. So I will start with, so remember, you don't have to worry about multiplying to zero. So you will do two times four. That will give you eight. And then again, you would do two times this four, and that will give you eight. And then you will go up here and count how many zeros are in your factor. That will give you one. And then you would do 880 times 10. So you bring that down. You can also bring this down. So we'll do, okay, we don't have to worry about the zeros. So we're doing one times eight is eight. 1 times this 8 is 8. And then you go back and you count how many factors are in the zero. I mean, how many zeros are in the factors? 1, 2, 1, 2, comma. Then we'll go on this side and we'll work this out. So then we'll say, okay, 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times this 4 is 8. But then how many zeros do we have in our factors? We only have 1 here. So you can also see that this statement is false. So you would just have the students work out the problems to determine if they're true or false. Okay, thank you so much for joining me today. Until I see you next time, bye.